Whether you have a portrait image or some product photos that you want to add onto a white background, you can do that pretty easily here in Photoshop. Now in this tutorial, I'm gonna share exactly how to do just that, but I'm not gonna just show you how to just cut out your image and add a white background. I'm gonna help you make it look a little bit more realistic with shadows and highlights and things like that. So that way you have the best result possible. So let's start things off simply by cutting out the image and adding our white background. Once you have your photo here in Photoshop, the first thing that you need to do is cut out your image. Now, if you're using Photoshop CC 2020 or newer, you'll have a really helpful option called Select Subject. Now, what this tool will do is select your person or your product or whatever your subject is in the photo. It'll select it for you and so you can quickly remove the background from it. Now, if you don't have that tool, we'll talk about another option in a second, but first let's walk through the Select Subject option. First, I'll select my image layer and I'll make sure it's unlocked and then we'll go to our properties panel. That can be found right up here. But if you do not see the properties panel, simply go up to window and down here to properties. And that's gonna bring up the same panel for you. Now with that layer selected and unlocked, you can scroll down to your quick actions and you'll see remove background and select subject. Now remove background will take away your background for you, but select subject will create a selection and that's what we want to do. So let's click on select subject. Photoshop will work its magic here. It might take a moment depending on how complicated the selection is, but once it's finished, you'll have this active selection around your subject represented by the marching ants. Now, if you're using an older version of Photoshop and you do not have this feature here, you can simply use the quick selection tool instead. That is gonna be a very helpful and easy tool that where you can just click and drag around your subject to get a similar selection as you see here. Now, if you wanna know more about the quick selection tool, I'll leave a video up in the corner right now to help you figure all of that out. But for this tutorial, we're just gonna use the select subject because it's so fast and easy. So now that you have your active selection, you wanna now double check that everything that you want is in fact selected. So let's just zoom in here and we'll take a look around the edges of our photo, making sure that the selection is following around what we're looking for pretty well. Now, if it doesn't for some reason, as you can see here, actually, the stripes of his shirt have become sort of not included in our selection, as you can see by these indents. Using our quick selection tool, we can quickly refine this area. So with our quick selection tool active here, selecting it from our toolbar, up in your settings bar, make sure to select this option right here that is to create a new selection. And then we can just use keyboard shortcuts to switch between adding and subtracting from the selection. Now, in this case, we need to add to this selection. So all we have to do is hold the shift key and notice how I now have this little plus icon I can just go and paint over those areas really easily while holding the shift key and I can add and refine that selection. So I'm adding those stripes back into the selection area. Now in this case, you can see how it bumped out a little too far. So all I have to do to remove part of the selection is hold alter option. Now, if you notice, I'll make my cursor a little bigger here so you can see if I hold alter option, there's a minus icon. So that means I'll be subtracting from my selection. Holding shift, you see the plus, alter option is minus. So since I want to subtract from my selection, I'm gonna hold alter option and just click over that area really easily there holding shift one more time. And now we have a good little selection going on around our shirt. And I'm happy with how everything is looking. Now as for the hair, we're gonna need to do a lot of refining here, but luckily that's really easy using the select and mask feature in Photoshop. The goal for now is just to have this basic selection going. Now that we have everything sorted out, our selection's looking pretty good. This is the most important step in the process. So we really wanna do a good job with this before we go and add our white background. With our quick selection tool selected and our selection active, we'll go up to select and mask. We'll press on that button right there in the upper setting bar. Now in this tool, we can go and actually refine our selection so we can basically select all of the hair and do that kind of stuff. Now, the first thing you want to do is adjust the view. So I'm gonna set this to on white because that's the background that we're gonna be switching to. But if you wanna see other options, you can click between the different views here. Another setting that I like to use is the black and white option as you can really get a good idea of how the edges of your subject and your cutout are looking. So that's another good option there. In this case, I'll just select on white and I'll zoom in just to see what kind of stuff we are dealing with at the moment. Now, in this case, you can see how around his shirt, it has like a bit of fringing, which is that black line left over from the 
original background. So all we have to do is go through our global refinements quickly just to touch that up. So the first thing I'll do is actually change my view to black and white because like I said, this just gives you a nice idea of how the edges are looking. Now zooming in here, you can see the edge of our shirt a little bit better. So I'll just bring up the smoothness just a touch and it's just going to level out any harsh jagged edges that you have in your selection. From there, I'll just increase the feather a touch just to blur those edges out and therefore smooth things a little bit more. You can experiment with this until you find a value that works for you. And then finally, we'll go to our contrast, increase that, and that's gonna make the edges of our subject nice and sharp so that it looks crisp and just like it would in real life if this wasn't a cutout. Now I'm gonna change my view back to on white so I can see everything that's going on here. And this is actually looking pretty good to me. So now we have to go and adjust our hair. Now the first thing that we can do is actually press this refine hair button up in the upper settings bar here. So with our refine edge brush tool selected, just click on refine hair and look what happens here. So after refining the hair, you can see how it looks a little bit different, but it still doesn't look super great. And actually we can make it look a bit more true to what our final result will be by going up to the opacity option here and just bringing that up to 100%. So now we have a totally white background so you can see exactly what hair is going to be left over around here. So obviously this doesn't look super great. There's nothing to write home about. We need to fix this. So what we can do is grab the refine edge brush tool make sure that this plus icon is selected so that we can add to our edge and from there we're just going to go and paint around the edge of your hair or in this case this person's hair and photoshop will do a pretty good job just to add back in any of the flyaways from the original image and just blend those edges in really nicely so that it just looks realistic and it has that nice hair look rather than a choppy cutout like you would expect from something like the pen tool or just using the quick selection tool. So that's where the select and mask option that we're using right now really comes in handy is that you can do stuff like this where you're able to add in those really tiny details to your selection that wouldn't be possible otherwise. So I'm literally just using my bracket keys to rescale the brush and I'm just dragging around the edge of his hair just to bring back any flyaways and things like that. So I'm pretty happy with how this is looking right now. And if there is a situation where you want to add back something that was removed, you can simply select this minus icon. And if I just go and paint over that, you'll notice how you just get rid of that area rather than adding on to it. I'll undo that because I wanted to keep it, but that is just something to be aware of. You can switch back and forth easily between the plus and the minus options, depending on whether you want to add or take away from the edge that you're working with. Now, once you're happy with all of your refine edge adjustments that we made, here. In this case, I'm happy with how his hair is looking at this point. We can go down to the output two option and I'm going to set it to a new layer with layer mask. So that's going to duplicate our layer and apply our selection onto a layer mask. So clicking OK. Now notice how we have a new layer with no background. So this is perfect because we're editing non-destructively by having a duplicate version. And now we can quickly add in a white background. So I'm going to first call this to cut out just so it's easy to remember and now it's time to go and add a white background to do that we'll go up to layer down here to new fill layer and then solid color we can call this to whatever you want i'll just leave it set to color fill one click ok and then we'll choose white as the color of choice click ok and then we'll click and drag this color fill layer underneath our cutout layer and now we have a white background to our image. Now, although we have technically completed the process, we have a white background, which wasn't previously there. The thing about this image currently is that it just doesn't blend super well. And that's mostly because of the shadows and the highlights on our subject compared to the white background. Now, if we look at our original image, for example, you can see that we have this nice shadow around on the background, but then in our new version with the white background, we have no shadows at all. So it just kind of feels Photoshop, to be honest with you. So we can actually go and add in a shadow behind our subjects very easily with two different methods. Now, the first method is just using the brush tool, but the second method actually utilizes the shadow that is already in your photo, assuming you have one that you can just add this shadow into your white background. But first, let's talk about the brush tool option. With the brush tool option, we'll just create a new layer and I'll call this to brush shadow. And then I'll select my brush tool 
set my foreground color to black, click OK. And then now we're going to select the soft round brush and then we'll just scale up our brush using the bracket key so we have a nice large brush here. From there, we're just gonna go and paint around the outside of our subject like that so we have sort of a nice glow. Now, once you've made the initial dark shadow, we're gonna actually bring down the opacity of our brush, clicking on the opacity option up here, drag that down to say 30%, and then we'll go and do one more stroke on the outside here. So that just gives it a nice bit of fall off from the darkest point to sort of transitioning out to white. So you can just add a few more spots like that and now our shadow actually looks pretty good just considering we're using the brush tool. Now, if you want to refine this even further, blend it in a bit more, you can select the brush shadow layer, go to the opacity option, and then just drag this down like so, and that's gonna reduce the opacity of the entire layer to help that blend in a little bit better. Now, just adding a little more in the corner, that actually looks really nice. It's an easy way to add some shadows into your white backgrounds, just using the brush tool, assuming that you do not have a shadow in your original photo that you can sample from. Now, in this case, I'm gonna just turn off my brush shadow layer. You can see that we have a actual shadow in our original image. So we're gonna actually go and utilize that shadow in our white background. To do that, we'll need to first duplicate our original layer. So selecting my layer zero, which is my original image, I'll press Command or Control J to duplicate it, and I'll just drag this above my shadow layer, above my color fill layer, but below my cutout layer. I'm gonna call this to shadow. Now turning that layer on, I'm gonna turn off my cutout layer, and we're gonna actually go and make this black and white so we can easily just paint on this shadow afterwards. So to do that, all you need to do is go to image, adjustments, and then desaturate. Now your photo will be black and white like this. Now we need to go and add some contrast so that our shadow is really the only thing that we notice against our white background. Clicking on the levels adjustment, I'm going to click on the highlights option, drag that down, it's gonna bring up all of our highlights and the goal here is to pretty much make everything white except for the shadow or any really dark areas in your photo. So as you can see, if I have it in this area, there's lots of detail in the background over here. But if I continue to drag it backwards, we can make all of this white and then you start to isolate the shadow a bit more. Then going to the shadows option right here, I'll click and drag that down to darken up those blacks, but I wanna find a nice balance so that it doesn't look too patchy. I just wanna make it the shadow look relatively soft and blended still. So adjusting those highlights and the shadow slider until you're happy with the result you have. And then we'll apply this to our shadow layer with a clipping mask so it only affects that one layer by clicking this little icon right here within our levels adjustment panel. Now it's time to make this look a little bit softer by adding a Gaussian blur. Selecting our shadow layer, we'll go up to filter, blur, Gaussian blur. And then we can just set a radius that basically just softens the shadow and gets rid of any weird textures that might be in the shadow because we're gonna actually see this on our white background. So in this case, around 26 pixels works for me, but it might be different depending on your image. Now clicking okay to commit to that. Now we have our shadow on its layer with our levels adjustment adding all that contrast. Now we want to apply the shadow directly behind our cutout and we can do that with a layer mask. So by holding Alt or Option and clicking on the layer mask icon with the shadow layer selected, you can see that we now have a black layer mask meaning everything is transparent on that particular layer. Turning back on my cutout layer by selecting the eyeball here, I'm gonna make sure that I have the white boxes around my shadow layer mask meaning that it's selected. I'll then select my brush tool and set my foreground color to white so that I'm adding on to my layer mask. I'm gonna make that shadow visible once again. I'm gonna set my opacity back to 100% and I'm still using this soft round brush. And then just gonna go and paint around the edges of my subject like this and we're gonna paint back in that shadow from the original photo. Now if it doesn't look great at first, that's totally fine and it's because you might need to just move things over a little bit. So with that shadow layer selected, I'll grab my move tool and then I can use the arrow keys just to nudge my shadow into position until I'm happy with it. And since it's behind my subject, it makes it blend nice and easily for me. So that looks pretty good right in there. I might do a little bit of refinements, setting black to my foreground color with the brush tool just to remove some of the shadows here. I'm 
we start to get the idea of how this all comes together. Now, if you're in a situation like you see with my image currently, there's still a bit of texture left over from the original photo. So all we have to do is just add a little bit more blur to even that out. So selecting our shadow layer thumbnail here, not the layer mask, the layer thumbnail, going up to filter, blur, and Gaussian blur once again, we can just add a little bit more blur to this just to make those textures get completely invisible. Click OK. And then just quickly reposition our shadow with the move tool to make it fit in a nice and realistic spot like so. So as you can see, this was a little bit more of a complex way to make your shadow, but the result just looks a little bit cleaner in my opinion. If we compare this shadow to our brush shadow, you can see that the shape of our shadow sampled from our original photo just blends around the shape of our person a little bit better than our general brush shadow does like that. However, both of these options are still valid and work just fine, but then now you have two different options no matter what type of photo you're dealing with. So now at this point, our image is looking pretty good, but we can go and make it look even better using the dodge and burn adjustments. So clicking on my cutout layer or the top layer in your layer stack, we're gonna go and create a 50% gray layer. By holding Command or Control, Shift and N, we'll have a new layer dialog box that appears. And I'm gonna set the mode to overlay and then check off the fill with 50% gray option. I'll call this layer to dodge and burn. Now we have a 50% gray layer that we can apply our dodge and burn adjustments onto. So selecting my dodge and burn adjustment like so, I'm gonna start with the dodge tool. I'm gonna set the range to midtones just so that it affects the general exposure of my subject. And then I'm gonna set this nice and high, something like 30 actually, just so that we can add a nice glow around his shoulders. So then we're replicating the light bouncing off of the background like you would get if you were actually shooting this person against a white solid studio backdrop. Now, if you went and just painted over your subject right now, you'd end up spilling onto the background as well. We only want to actually affect our subject here. So what we can do is just right click and go to create clipping mask. And that's going to clip our dodge and burn layer to our subject. So therefore we will only be able to brighten the subject and not the background. So that just makes life really easy. Now I'm just gonna scale up my dodge adjustment with the bracket keys, and I'll just begin to paint around the edges. You can also go around his hair like so, just to brighten up parts of his hair that are on the light side of the image. You don't wanna brighten anything that is in the shadows, otherwise it's not gonna make a whole lot of sense. So this looks pretty good in here. I'm also gonna just go along any of the highlights on his skin and maybe just around his entire shirt, I'll just brighten that entire thing up a little bit like so. So now that looks a little bit better and now we can go and do our burning adjustments, which is going to darken. So once again, set the range to midtones, the exposure I'll put around 30% and then I'll just go through with a relatively small brush and just accent any of the shadows that we have in our subject. So and maybe just darken around this part of his hair to darken up these shadowed areas like so. And this just helps to add a little bit more contrast to your subject, which would definitely be there if you were actually shooting against the white background. So all of this helps. So turning that adjustment on and off, you can see how it just adds a little bit of nice contrast into our photo and just makes it blend a little bit better to the white background. So it's like you're actually shooting your subject against that background. So now looking at our before and after, you can see how we've nicely blended our subject onto a white background. We've added in our shadow with two different methods, depending on what you're into. And then we blended it all together using the dodge and burn adjustments on a 50% gray layer. So we're editing non-destructively. So if you made it this far in the tutorial, you now know all of the intricacies of adding your subject onto a white background. But if you just wanted to cut out your subject and add a white color fill layer, then as we went through earlier in this tutorial, that can be done in much less time. Now, if you wanna know more ways to change background color, particularly adding gradients or different colors to your background, then make sure to check out my other tutorial that I'll leave up in the corner right now that shares all the details on that as it has a little bit of different techniques than what we covered here. Now, if you enjoyed today's video, make sure to hit that subscribe button down below so we can hang out, talk about Photoshop, Lightroom, photo editing and all of that good stuff. Again, my name's Brennan from BeWillCreative.com and I'll catch you back here next time for another new tutorial. See you then.